Hello, all you on Zoom, can you hear us okay? Yeah, loud and clear. Wonderful. Right, um, so this evening we've got a nice clear night here, so hopefully we'll be able to use the telescopes. The, the idea of this evening is basically to welcome new members, we'll say people who've joined in the last um, six months. So people, raise your hands if you've joined us in the last six months. Great, we've got some new members. <laughs> We haven't actually joined. We're well, you're going to join, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, a little very smattering about the NLO, if you didn't know it already. We've been here a long time. Um, established by Lockyer and his son, Jim, back in 1912. I won't delve into, into all Lockyer's discoveries. But um, they were quite a pair, those two. Lockyer died in 1920, and, and Jim uh, followed suit in 1936. And the observatory was since then was run by the Norman Lockyer Corporation. Um, and they ran out of money in the 1960s. And the last paid astronomer was uh, Donald Barber, who this hall's named after. And then was taken over by Exeter University. At that time, they didn't have an astronomy department. They had a geophysics department, uh, but they planned to sell the site. That's when property prices were booming. The good people in Sidmouth didn't want that to happen. Um, they, spearheaded by Patrick Moore, uh, raised £300,000 in uh, a few months and gave money to Sidmouth uh, East Devon District Council, who bought the site and who are now our landlords. So since then, we've built the Planetarium in 1996, the Donald Barber Lecture Theatre in 2006. And of course, Lockyer had planned to build his Connaught Dome back in April 1914, just before the First World War. Uh, unfortunately, that never happened. But we did raise funds and we built the Connaught Dome uh, in 2012. And opened by Dr. Brian May, who now is Sir Brian May, um, and is our patron. Followed by a very generous donation by the late Gina Divian, allowed us to build a wonderful extension next door where the um, Astro Scouts have their meeting presently. So the observatory today, of course, we've got our three historic telescopes, which uh, hopefully we will certainly we'll get the Lockyer uh, open today. The Kensington is having work. You might have seen the scaffold up around the two domes. They're currently being worked on. It's been a long haul. Uh, getting the shutters repaired, but we have the structural engineer coming out next week for the Kensington. So hopefully by the summer that we have all these telescopes operational. We've also got this wonderful uh, Mond Equatorial, which is going to be set up in the passageway uh, adjoining here. That was uh, kindly be bequeathed by the late Glyn Marsh, who bought it back in the uh, 1990s when the, uh, the dispersal sale of Lockyer's office and all the equipment. So that's got, not going to be reinstated to its full height, obviously, because it's a pretty tall uh, uh, instrument, but we're going to build it from there upwards. So we'll have the main cameras and the equatorial uh, rigged for uh, basically as a historic museum piece. It's a photographic camera, so you can't actually look through it. Um, it was constructed out of old World War I aerial reconnaissance cameras. The lenses are superb, they're all Zeiss lenses of top quality. And of course, you've got a lot of spectral plates um, from these instruments and photographic plates. Uh, you might not be aware, but we've got a, in the dark room, there's a vast collection of lantern slides and spectral plates, and a uh, young lady, lady researcher from Exeter University is 
currently uh, working on her PhD, um, cataloging them all. So our, our more modern telescopes we'll have operating tonight is the, the Connell 1, 20 inch, and the Celestron in the little Victoria Dome. And both these are computer controlled and we can certainly image um, through this one. We'll get that going later this evening. Um, we also have the LTC, the Lockyer Technology Center, where we do our meteor detecting station. Um, Dave Jones will be able to show you how that all works. You're very welcome to you know, go around all these sites um, during the course of the evening. So, MLO today, we have open days, school visits, and private bookings. You're more than welcome to join in and, and help out at these. It's very relaxed, informal events. Uh, we have, well, mainly it's myself and Mike host these, but we have quite a bit of fun with that. Then the NO Society members themselves were split up with the Astro Scouts, NLO members, Cosmology Group, um, led by Mike Curran, they meet on Zoom on the fourth Tuesday in the month and at the LTC Friday evenings. And now it was the NLO History Group, it's now been renamed the NLO STEM Group, and they meet on the first Tuesday in the month at 2.30 here at the NLO, but also on Zoom. We also um, host an event for Sidmouth Science Festival in October. Now the NLO is actually run by, or the how it is run, we have a board of directors here, um, and that's us lot, whoops, there. And we also have a management committee which links us with our landlords, East End District Council and Sidmouth Town Council. So perhaps we will take this opportunity to introduce ourselves so I'm David Strange, the chairman. Um, I've been here since 2006, when I, I'm a retired farmer, been a keen astronomer for many years. I had an observatory um, on my farm in South Dorset. I've uh, been chairman of the Wessex Astronomical Society for many years. And um, so I retired here uh, to Branscombe, and uh, because the NLO was just down the road, it was a good place for me to develop my astronomy. So that's me. Over to Alan Green. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of you know me. I've been here now for over 20 years. Uh, Jack Wickings was the chairman when I joined, and he used to call me Young Alan. I'm not quite sure what he called me now, but uh, anyway, so, and I've been actually involved in most of the building work at this observatory, built the lecture theatre, the classroom, the common dome, and uh, so I've been heavily involved, also lifting the common dome, I think it was four times in total, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to fit it together to work, and now I'm, I'm basically, uh, I look after all the maintenance work within the buildings itself, uh, we have a Thursday club, which is quite well, well all, anybody's welcome to come on Thursday, just to do general maintenance throughout the building, or around the grounds as well. Um, I look after the internet, the uh, telephones, the fire alarm, phone alarm system, and uh, well, oh, the heating. <laughs> but that all comes under, you know, looking after the building. But anyway, and uh, actually, I still fire up. I enjoy myself up here anyway, so, and welcome to the new members as well. If you want to know anything, how things work, or anything like, come and sort me out, come find me, and I'll point you in the right direction. Okay. That's fine, thank you, Alan. Okay. <laughs> Pete, oh, okay. do you have anything to say about yourself? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, hi, I'm, I'm Pete Garrett, um, I've been a member for probably 10 years or so, um, <clears throat> got involved through my youngest son. Uh, William, um, who's put up and did an astronomy degree. Um, I send out various emails and things to members telling you what's going on and keeping you in touch. Um, we, we used to have a, a newsletter that came out four times a year and I started editing that, uh, but at the moment I don't get much content so it isn't being sent out at the moment. 
and I rely on the members to send me stuff to send out. And the only thing I've got is something that Kerry did ages ago, which I've, yeah. um, <laughs> I've not had anything to add to it to send out. But, um, and um, I project manage the, uh, the JEC um, and help Alan out with a lot of the uh, sort of more demanding uh, sort of aspects of the maintenance. <laughs> um, and I do all, I've done other things like risk assessments. I did the uh, fire um, arrange, fire escape arrangements and signage and stuff like that. So, um, so that's me. Thank you, Pete. Phil, you like to say a few words. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> um, actually, well, I'm, I'm Phil Smith. I, I'm uh, the newest member of the board of directors. And uh, I've got a lot to learn. Um, so I've always got my ears open. Um, I'm coming on mainly on a, on a Thursday to get on a hand and do some maintenance tests to the code, which is great fun. But um, my main function here now is actually looking at the planetary. Uh, which I'm very pleased to do. Uh, having worked in electronics uh, in one form or another in my life, um, uh, and as a youngster, I was doing six years of electronics, so it came in very handy when it came to, to uh, looking at the um, That's about it, really. Um, I'm just uh, the sprog, and I'm very happy to make the Thank you, Phil. And I think. Uh... That's all the directors here this evening. Uh, Bob, we must give a mention to Alan Smith, who's our chief observer. Yes. Hello, I'd like to say a few words. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Alan Smith. Um, I joined the society it's probably about five years ago, but uh, it doesn't feel that long ago because we all lost three years somewhere mm. in the middle. Uh, it's, it's a bit strange, really. Um, but in those, in those two years, hopefully the only thing that's come across is that I'm actually quite keen at doing observing. Um, and, and that means I'll take any opportunity to encourage people to get out of the stars and make use of uh, a lot of the equipment that we've accumulated here. Um, I've recently been doing some work to find out exactly what we've got in the way of portable telescopes, and most of those are ready to use. So I encourage you, if you, if you want to use a telescope, uh, you're very welcome to go on any clear night, either after a meeting here or when we arrange something like tonight, which was an observing workshop. So this is just an excuse to get to see some of the equipment that's here um, and see if there's a telescope. There might be one that you're looking to buy yourself um, in terms of a type of telescope. You're not really sure what you can do with it. Well, there's an opportunity to, to look at something similar here um, to see if it really does do what, what we'd like. Um, so in a little while, um, we'll set one or two of the portable telescopes up outside and. Hopefully, we can compare the views through those through, um, with some of the bigger ones that you've got scattered around. And you might pleasantly be surprised what you can see through some of the telescopes. If you've got any questions about what you might see in the sky, then do ask me. Um, you might have already had the occasional email from me where um, I, I do some monthly notes just giving you warning about some of the things that are happening in the sky. So. Great. Thank you, Alan. So, I think that's. Yeah, just some useful links here if people are not aware. Another website, we've been I've got a wonderful calendar on that, so you can't miss out the events listed there. We've got a whoops, Facebook page um, on Twitter. We've got another WhatsApp group. Um, contact Alex if you, if you want to join that. <laughs> um, uh, we've got NLO groups message board. And there's also an Astro Imaging Southwest uh, website run by um, Steve Boyce. So that's all I'm going to say. Many thanks for listening and let's go observing. So all those on Zoom, um, that's probably going to be the end of the event as far as I'm concerned. So thanks for listening in, but come and join us again hello when you get a chance. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Have a good night observing. Cheers. <laughs>